Hello, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here. We are still in Cobra Convergence, and we have another Cobra Convergence collaborator here. It's Chad. Hello, it's Chad. How do you Hello. do? Um, this is your first year participating as a, a featured presenter in Cobra Convergence. Uh, for those who don't know you, uh, could you just uh, introduce yourself, talk about yourself, and uh, tell them what you do uh, here on YouTube? Uh, well... Obviously, my name is Chad, right? And uh, my channel is It's Chad, previously articulated Chad. Um, anybody who follows me knows why I, I changed it. So that's its own story. Um, I've been on YouTube for a year. Uh, I'm just about to hit my one year anniversary. And I only do it uh, just to share in the love of, you know, toys. And I believe that uh, as, as collectors and lovers of these pieces of art, that we're kind of the stewards of these things. And um, I believe in caring for them and cleaning them and restoring them and that sort of thing. So we can pass it on to the next generation. I am active duty military. I have been my entire uh, adult life. That's the only career I've ever known. And my decision to join the military and have my life go in that direction is a direct result of my love of GI Joe uh, ever since 1982, uh, when I picked up my very first figure who was Flash. That that's a uh, actually I was gonna ask that because uh, yeah the Flash seems to be a lot of uh, of 1982 fans first figure I guess that one just kind of jumped out at people and right like Flash that. Breaker yeah yeah and I, I was a breaker uh, I, I, right. I got a breaker um, I don't know why <laughs> I was I was seven at the time um, so uh, yeah on uh, what kind of stuff um, will people expect to see on your channel because I'm hoping that a lot of people will be checking you out right now um, I talk almost predominantly about 118 scale uh, three and three quarter um, real American hero 82 to 94 stuff I also do a lot with modern construction four inch 118 scale I don't just talk about GI Joe there's a lot of stuff about action force like the the palatoys action force so i talk about um all the action force teams especially uh, red shadows and things like that i talk about marauder gun runners eagle force stuff like that and some of the off brands like this like the soldier force stuff yeah so i, I just did a video on this cool little attack hovercraft and uh, I just unboxed this and built this. And, you know, this stuff's kind of cool. So this is the stuff that was that third-party off-brand when we were kids. But now yeah. it's just uh, it's just really awesome. And it fits it fits in really well, like, with, with all my G.I. Joe and Action Force stuff over here. So I, I kind of love that stuff. And I, I talk about things like that as well. And I make a lot of customs. Uh, I show a lot of my customs, a lot of 118 scale Mega Force and Mass custom stuff that I build. So there's Maybe a lot of that. Too. And then there's car rants. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you, you uh, showed us a, a third party uh, vehicle and mm -hmm. that's something that maybe doesn't get talked about a lot. It's as probably not chronicled very well anywhere because right. I mean, it wasn't, these things were kind of made to complement GI Joe uh, and other lines in that scale. Cause they were so popular. Um, um, Beyond GI Joe, I mean, you talked about some of the things. Talk about some of the uh, the other things beyond GI Joe that uh, you're passionate about and that uh, make it into your collection. So I'm I'm passionate about the Palatoy Action Force stuff, um, mostly when they had the the team. So you had you know the SAS and the Q Force and things like that versus the Red Shadows. Really passionate about that, and also the history when you talk about the the action force comics how baron ironblood became cobra commander and things like that when they rolled into international hero so i'm i'm really interested in that stuff uh, a lot of the palatoys toys are very amazing so you have the gi joe apc that palatoys took and made into the atc uh -huh. and they actually improved upon that vehicle design and i've got one sitting right over here on the shelf and big fan of those and uh, the Robo Skull, you know, mm -hmm. Bob Brecon's design for the Robo Skull, I, I think is really amazing. Uh, so I, I talk about that stuff a lot. Um, I have several Masterpiece Transformers. Uh, I'm one of those people, and you and I have discussed this before, where I like mask 
and Transformers kind of mixed into my G.I. Joe universe. I'm not necessarily a real American hero only sort of purist. And so I I, I do a bi-weekly stream talking about only 90 to 94 a real American hero stuff called Neon at Night, where I, I really sort of celebrate the 90s stuff that a lot of G.I. Joe collectors tend to disregard the 90 to 94 stuff, but there's a lot of really awesome figures in there. Um, I've, I've gone in depth into the commercials, um, the live action commercial serialized stuff, how that doesn't get a lot of attention, but it was really unique for its time. And uh, I just sort of talk about just um, stuff like that. The 30th anniversary releases of the O-Ring figures that came out. Uh, th those are really awesome. That came out in 94. So Neon at Night. What it makes me think of is like, um, oh, oh, those of us over here doing the 80s stuff, we're Baywatch and you're Baywatch Nights. That's just what comes to mind. Uh, so you're you're the you're the David Hasselhoff of uh, of Neon at Night uh, uh, for whatever that's worth. Uh, sort of. Yeah. My there, original there idea. Sorry. My original idea for Neon at Night was. Uh, do you remember Night Flight? That old yeah. music video show. Yeah. It was like yeah. I want to do a show about '90s Joes, but I want it to be kind of like Night Flight, where we wear like neon colored, you know, really annoying shirts or Hawaiian shirts, and it was it was to show love to those four years of Joe, but it was also like sort of tongue in cheek at the same time. Well, it's it, that's a that's a lot better than Baywatch Nights. Well, well, yeah. well yeah. thought out there. Night um, Flight. But it is true that, like, uh, for those of us who became fans in the early, especially the early '80s, a lot of us were out of it by the '90s, and I and I suspect there are a lot of fans of GI Joe that grew up with the Sunbow cartoon and the Marvel comic and like those um, '80s toys and may not be fully aware of what happened in the '90s. Yep, um, and I was wondering that's, some, that's something you're exploring of. Uh, mm -hmm. What uh, what would you say to a Joe fan who is not aware of the '90s? What what uh, what should they look at that might uh, appeal to them? What's what jumps out at you that you think they should see? I would say take a really hard look at the General Flag figure. Take a good look at Shipwreck version two, Ace version three with the Ghost Striker, the Headhunter Stormtrooper. To me, is my favorite army builder, the sculpt is amazing, and it's just a great figure. There's a lot of stuff in the 90s. Uh, the blockbuster vehicle right there, that's a great vehicle. There's a lot of stuff that came out in the 90s. The general, it's the last really large vehicle slash playset. So there, there's a lot of good stuff that I think some people just tend to overlook because it it's post 87, 88. Yeah, there was there does seem to be a dichotomy there, and you, you said mentioned eighty seven, eighty eight uh, around the time that the the movie came out, and then there was a gap between the animated series. There does right. seem to be a dichotomy there, so it's nice yeah. to see somebody trying to trying to bridge that gap a little bit. Uh, so that's really cool. Yeah. Um, we uh, this is your first year as a featured presenter in Cobra Convergence. Um, it is. You, you know what your topic is. I know that we're recording this in advance of that, but um, uh, uh, talk to us a little bit about what your idea is for your Cobra Convergence presentation and where you would like to go with that. Well, it, the theme that you had put out there was um, try to keep it around espionage. And since my wife and I are both members of the Finest Costume Club and her main is the Baroness, right, obviously, I wanted to not only celebrate my wife's main costume in the finest, um, but also the Baroness as a character in herself. So just when you look at the history of the Baroness and how she was designed with Ron Rudat specifically gave her glasses. So she came across the, like the visual language that she was intelligent and she's deadly she like in the very first episode of the mass device the baroness is her introduction is she's she's in a uh, a costume because she snuck into that base and she just sort of tears it off and so i i think that sometimes the fact that the baroness was doing it long before zorana is lost on some people and so i just kind of wanted to talk about that yes she's you know cobra's intelligence officer but she's also counterintelligence and espionage and things like that. So I, I really wanted to 
center on that. We talk a lot about uh, Cobra Commander and we talk a lot about Destro and mm -hmm. how they're sort of, uh, uh, I, you might say, opposite ends of the um, the Cobra leadership spectrum with right. um, Cobra Commander being perhaps a bit more cynical and Destro being perhaps a bit more honorable, both bad guys, but with totally different characters. But then there's the Baroness who's sort of right in between. She sort of triangulates those positions. Um, right. And uh, yeah, you mentioned that uh, uh, her uh, animated appearance, uh, but in the comic book as well, she kind of had divided loyalties. Uh, so um, is that is that one of the appeals that you uh, of the Baroness and and where do you see her in uh, Cobra's uh, hierarchy? How does she fit? Um, and like, how does she balance these conflicting um, loyalties? That's it's a good question, and that's it, it shines a light on the interesting fact that there are a lot of layers to G.I. Joe. So you have the comics, you have the file cards written by the same guy, you have the Sunbow series, and then you have, you know, on and on and on. Then you get into the live action movies. But Baroness was always described as in the early years being Cobra Commander's second in command. So that is kind of where I see her. However, having to take in all the other aspects of those layers, she she has a loyalty to Cobra, but at the same time, she has a loyalty to Destro because of her her relationship with Destro and her feelings for him. And then in in the cartoon, they made it a little more that um, she was in an abusive relationship with Destro because he didn't treat her all that great. But in the cartoon, it was completely different. So I still see her as Cobra's second in command. But she will also, she will switch her loyalty to Destro when it affects her on a personal level. Uh, and then there's uh, also in the comics, um, you know, the the killing of Storm Shadow and how that all went down on the beach. And, yeah, yeah, she's uh, yeah, she certainly holds her own. Uh, it's it's a shame that we only got one vintage figure of the Baroness given that she was in the animated series, in the comic book, throughout the whole run. She was right. in the Deke series. She was in the Sunbow series. Uh, but uh, one and only one action figure. Um, I believe there was one planned uh, for 90, 1995, if 95. the one to carry, yeah. but we, we never got that. We never yeah. got that. Well, it's just too bad. Yeah, yeah the, uh, the Battle Corps Rangers, they did, they did plan one for her. And I will say, at least in the, the modern... The modern runs of the figures they did correct that so there are numerous baroness versions in the modern figures yeah and that, that is nice to see uh that uh, um the the black uniform is awesome that's really yeah. cool and it's really like that is actually one of the uh uniforms that have been updated really well and mm -hmm. fit really well with more modern sculpting and uh uh you know molding it just it, it translates really well to a modern figure i think uh do you have a favorite version of the baroness i like the her original blue with the yellow accents and the green glasses i'm a really big fan of that original design of the baroness yeah, and that's not that's not the first version of the figure we got. We got the the black version. We uh, at least in that era, we did not get uh, the blue uniform, which is how she was presented uh, for at least the first year that yep. she existed. Yep. Uh, yeah. Her but, very first comic appearance and her first animated appearance, she was wearing that outfit. Um, and uh, they they did eventually get to that, right? They they have done that, but um, that's they, it's a lesser known one. Right. But yeah, that's that's for, for those of us from that era, that was the Baroness before, you know, the uh, the, the the dominatrix costume. Right. Uh, right. Um, so uh, we, we've talked about. Um, well, I, well is, is I was going to ask who's your favorite Cobra? Is it the Baroness uh, or um, or do you have any that um, that stand out to you more than the Baroness? I, I want to say Storm Shadow, but again, right layers because yeah. Storm Shadow is—is is he really a Cobra? I guess it depends on how you look at it. Um, 
if we're going at face value in those early years, I would say Storm Shadow. Otherwise, I, I would say the Baroness, yeah. Uh, that's a good choice. And that, yeah, you're right. Uh, complicated when you talk about Storm Shadow. Uh, right. Very, very complicated. Which is awesome. Yeah. Um, so uh, you, uh, your channel, it's Chad. Um, you've been going for a year now. Um, and uh, really happy to have you in Cobra Convergence this year. Um, I know that, again, we're recording this pretty well in advance, but mm -hmm. Uh, what do people have to look forward to? Um, so hopefully people will go to your channel, check out your Cobra Convergence presentation. They will subscribe. Um, do you have any plans for the future? What can people expect when they check you out and, um, you know, just going forward? Well, um, I'm just kind of sticking with my formula because it works for me and I, I really only like to talk about stuff that I'm passionate about. Otherwise I don't really, I don't feel like I put all of my heart and soul into it. I don't really discuss, um, one twelve scale or classified stuff. It's just, um, it's not my wheelhouse. Um, I'm, I'm happy for anybody who's all about it, but it's just not my thing. So I don't really get into it. I do a lot of, um, you know, when it, when it applies, I do a lot of unboxings. Like I, I unboxed a, a sealed 1994 blockbuster. I unboxed a 93 Cobra detonator, uh, things like that. Again, I, this, you know, the, the off brand, the soldier force, I unboxed and built this and put the stickers on it on camera. And, um, I don't necessarily do a lot of figure reviews, but I show customs, uh, how I build my customs when, when the Buzz Lightyear XL-15 fighter came out, um, I kind of went over the vehicle and how you can customize the cockpit to either fit one classified scale figure or two 118 scale figures and how you can put seats in it and things like that. And That's just sort of what I do. Um, if, if something rubs me the wrong way, I'll do a car rant on it. Um, but generally, it's just customs, unboxing, you know, things like that. I do a lot of live streams talking with other other creators. I, I have a couple of different live streams that I do, but the primary one, once once the whole Road to Joe Fest is over, the, the primary stream that I do is the bi-weekly Neon at Night because I, I think that 90 to 94 doesn't get enough love. But uh, I, I generally stay around the 118 scale because I enjoy world building and play sets and vehicles. Uh, that putting that spotlight on the the '90s stuff, I think that is going to only become more valuable uh, as um, people from that era start to come back and look at uh, at their collections and look at you know their nostalgia. So I, I think that's only going to get bigger uh, as that audience uh, grows. Agreed. Uh, but you mentioned Joe Fest. Now we're recording this before Joe Fest. But it'll go up in the past. Yes, after Joe Fest. So we're talking to our future selves now. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, yeah, but uh, I, I know that both of us has been, have been to Joe Fest, and it's not entirely on topic. But what the heck? Let's go for it. Um, Let's do it. Um, because I'm hoping to meet a lot of people at Joe Fest. Uh, yes. What do you like about it? Why do you go? And what do you look forward to? I like Joe Fest because it's kind of the premier event for. G.I. Joe people. It's it's that thing, you know, it was Joe Con, and then luck, luckily Ed and some other people, you know, sort of took that ball and ran with it and carried the torch of a G.I. Joe centered con, basically, even though it's uh, you know, it's independent. But I, I love Joe Fest because I can always go there and um I'm that toy hunter that I do lists. I don't just kind of go in randomly in like a shotgun approach, but I do lists like, well, I'm lacking this vehicle from this year or so on and so forth. Like you and I talked about, I'm, I'm trying to find a crossfire. And yeah. I did see some crossfires last year, but it wasn't what I was looking for last year. So I do go for the toys, but mainly I go for the friends, the people I only see at Joe Fest. You know, last year I got to see you a couple of times and I, I won't see you again until this year and things like that. Um, I, I do go for the celebrities, but most of them I have seen before, but it, it's still nice to kind of re-engage them. But it's just for the one-off things that I can't get from 
eBay or toy hunts or things like that. Um, seeing the people in person, you know, shaking hands, hugs, getting things signed. Uh, you know, I, I have some art from you. I have some art from Ron Rudat on and on and on. I, I, I get those things where I, I covet them as pieces of my collection that I can't just go grab off eBay. So that's why I really enjoy Joe Fest. And Joe Fest, it's different from a lot of the other cons that, you know, I've been to or experienced either annually or whenever I can, because it's, it's so much more intimate, like more down to earth. There's, there's not that stress at Joe Fest. It's, it's really just like, okay, like, I know it may sound weird or cliche, but it's like, these are my people. And, and this is where I'm most comfortable. And you can talk to anybody, anybody. You could be standing at a vendor's booth looking at something and a person comes up next to you and you could just, just strike up a conversation about figures that you're looking at. And, oh yeah, you know, and I got that last year and blah, blah, blah. And, oh, you're looking for this. That guy has it over there. And it's just super cool. It's the one place you can go where people will know about this stuff. Any basically yep. anybody in that room is going to know right. this about this stuff. Yeah. Um, so uh, yeah, uh, you mentioned that you uh, uh, you do customs. You do custom figures. Um, I do. You, I do. Have you ever thought about taking some customs out to Joe Fest and showing them off? No, no, I, I've, I've never really thought about that. Um, I've never, I've never sold a custom. I, I don't, the only times I ever really show my customs is, and it, it's a fine line. It's not to show them off. It's to maybe spark creativity in somebody else who may have that base vehicle or would want something like that. And they've never maybe either seen it in their head like that. And I just kind of share it as like a, it, you know, creativity sort of a thing. I've had people ask me for customs before and I've given some away. Um, I am part of a quarterly toy exchange uh, with a group of people. And the person I got for the second to the last one, she's a really big fan of Alley Vipers. And I make a lot of custom Hiss tanks for myself. So I made her a custom Alley Viper Hiss tank. The nice. red with the that weird blue kind yeah. of um, sharp camouflage pattern, and I I put some custom armaments on it for her, and I actually built that for her. And I did make a video; it's on my channel of, of how I made that, but I didn't post the video until after she opened it. Uh, it's it's amazing how many um, uh, Alley Viper fans are out there, aren't they? So right. That's a it's a it's surprisingly a fan favorite. Lots of. Right. Lots of it's a, a big following. Um, well, we got a few more minutes, and um, I'd like to wrap up by uh, uh, asking you to take those few minutes uh, to uh, say any uh, parting words or thoughts that you have uh, with the audience uh, and making sure that everybody knows that they need to check out It's Chad. There will be a link um with this video to uh to check it out so um i will give you the floor for however many reasons we or uh, however many <laughs> minutes that we have uh left so that you can uh give your 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 parting wisdom that's that's always a, a challenge because i'm even though my name is chad and chads are supposed to be super extra all the time i'm i'm very much that quiet sort of person i just uh i do what speaks to me and and i hope people enjoy it i i do it from the heart and i i only do it for fun right it, it's just for the love of it and i i just want to share those things with other people so the the 90 to 94 i i am glad that i get to sort of plant my flag on those years that a lot of people don't really talk about. And it's, it's caught on. And I, I really appreciate that, that people enjoy it. I like, I like talking with other creators. When I first started my articulated chat show, it was to sort of highlight other content creators that maybe don't have such a presence on say a YouTube or social media that just do like podcasts and smaller things like that, or, independent toy lines which i'm a big fan of i think that fans kind of do the best work these days and and you and i have discussed that before and i think that that's something that um you know we vote with our dollars and i enjoy supporting and, and 
talking about uh, the customs. Uh, I, I like sharing that creativity with people, and I, I like talking with other custom creators because I, I think it's a, a skill set that anybody can learn. It, it shouldn't be a very daunting thing, and uh, you know we we all had to learn at some point, and that's kind of how you learn is you talk to other customizers. Um, I don't really talk too much about costuming, even though being part of the finest is it's um, it's something that I, I really appreciate and enjoy because uh, we do a lot for charities. But um, that's that's just kind of something that I, I do discuss it, but I don't really make videos about costuming too much. That's uh, it's that's pretty much it. So if if you like one eighteen scale. Uh, be it G.I. Joe or independent lines, say like uh, Marauder Gunrunners, or you, you're looking forward to Call Sign Longbow and uh, Operation Recall and things like that. If you like play sets and vehicles, and, and again, you know, things like these off brands like Soldier Force that you normally wouldn't think about, but look at that. That fits right in with, say, That's Action what... Force Q Force, or yeah. it it's right in with we, a. We killer all whale. played with stuff like that yeah. as kids. We all augmented our G.I. Joe worlds yeah. with and those. I had this exact hovercraft as a kid. And I remembered it, and that's why when I went to look for it, I, I found it on eBay, inexpensive, sealed in a box, and there it is, 100% complete. And you can find these things, and you can you can augment your 118 scale collection, and I'm just a big um, fan. One thing that I think uh, is important about what you're doing with um, with your your discussion of 90s GI Joe is that um, what I would like to see is um gi joe fans in general at least appreciating these things even if it's not specifically what they do uh right. because we can um have different eras and we do have different eras but that doesn't mean we have to have different factions that are at war with each other and i i hate to see that when other fandoms do it and um i think it's important i think it's important that um that we acknowledge that we do have these other eras, but we also like come together and talk about it and uh, look at what we can enjoy together. And uh, I, I'm, I'm really glad that you're doing that. I, I appreciate that very much. I appreciate that. And that's, that's kind of where I'm at with it for, for every eco force Flint, there's a general flag or a shipwreck version too. So it, it, you know, it balances out and people, they, they always want to write off the nineties, but, 92 was Joe's 93 was Joe's second biggest year. And that there is uh you 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 mentioned a couple figures um the 90s has maybe justifiably a reputation for being quite uh, uh loud, you know, like yeah. uh colorful, but there were some nice military themed figures uh through every in every year. Sure. Um but and you mentioned a couple of them and uh I I hope that people will will check out your show. Uh, we'll also listen and discover something new. Um, and um, and uh, right now, as you're seeing this, it's Chad uh, hey. should have his Baroness Cobra Convergence 7 um, presentation live on his channel. Check the, the link in the description. And, um, and that's it. Uh, 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 everybody go check out Chad. Subscribe to his channel. Uh, support what he does. And... Uh, uh, Chad, thank you very much for being here. Thank you for having me on your show. That was a lot of fun. Absolutely. Uh, it, it was my pleasure, Brian. I appreciate it. Uh, and, and thank you for all you do. Um, yeah, and uh, you. with that, I will let the audience go so they can check out your show. Very cool. All right. Thank you. Yo, Joe.